how many people were actually indicted um, behind the death of Kiki Camarena? I think that we had like a total of 19 indictments. I think we only brought to, to trial like eight, eight other defendants, which most of them got life terms. Okay, were any of these um, defendants the head of the Guadalajara? No. Cartel? We could, we could never no. touch those guys. Most of the defendants were uh, uh, major drug dealers, uh, but uh, they were not like the heads of anything. And they all got life sentences here in the U.S.? Yes, sir. Okay, you brought up um, El Chapo, who is currently serving time here in the U.S. Did you ever have any interaction with him when he was on the street? No, uh, I knew about him. I didn't really know his real name. I just know that there was El Chapo who was there by the witnesses. They didn't, they couldn't remember his name, who said that he participated in, in kicking and torturing Camarena and that he had been assigned to go to the airport to pick up the pilot that, 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 that actually photographs the field that I talked about. Because Camarena gave the pilot up in, his, in, in, in the beating he was getting. He basically gave the pilot's name up. So they then said, okay, good, let's go grab the pilot. So they get a team together, headed by Felix Gallardo, who was there. And Chapo Guzman was with that team. Him and Huero Palma, another major trafficker, they, they were part of the team that went and picked up the, the pilot, brought him back to the house. And they basically, they, they confronted uh, the pilot with Kiki. They were trying to get information from both of them. He was, the pilot was also tor tortured, but um, he was, like I said, neither, neither one of them were really dead when they took him and buried him. They were both alive. And uh, we know because there was dirt in their lungs, so they breathed a lot, of, a lot of dirt when they were buried. So the pilot was buried alive. That's so horrible. That's so horrible. Okay, within that room, you spoke about uh, uh, a CIA agent, if you will. Um, this guy was very mysterious, but he was pretty much behind uh, the capturing and torturing of Kiki. What, what is his? Is is his name Max something? Okay. When I remember when I brought up the witnesses, I didn't bring them all together. I brought one uh -huh. witness up. And he, when I would, because I, I had a book of all the suspects and, and, and photograph, and I would ask him, was this guy there? Was that guy there? Was this guy there? And they would say, yeah, he was there. And then I would write a report as to who they, who the witness, let's say, identified from the photo lineup as to having been there at the scene torturing Camarena. Uh, somebody had that told me that there was a guy, well, one of the first witnesses, there was a guy there, there was a Cuban there interrogating Kiki. And I said, a Cuban? Why would a Cuban be there? And I said, what was the Cuban's name? He's, uh, he says he was, his name was uh, Max Gomez. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. So, I, you know, we ran Max Gomez through all our databases, NCIC, uh, the Treasury uh, database, all of them, NADAS, and nothing would come up, Sean, on this Cuban guy, Felix Rodriguez. Six months, eight months later, we bring another witness that was that was also there at the scene that decided they brought, that was going to cooperate. Again, he says there was a Cuban guy that was interrogating Kiki a lot. A Cuban guy? He says, yes. He says, what was his name? He says his name was uh, Felix, uh, Max Gomez. Max Gomez? I said, I've heard that name. Are you sure his name was Gomez? He says, that's, that's what he, everybody called him, Max Gomez. And then finally, a year later, that third witness comes up who was very close to Fonseca. And I'm going to the book, too, and asking him who was there and everything else. And, and he says, who else was there that might not be in this book? He says there was a Cuban guy who went by Max Gomez, but that was his CIA undercover name. He was a CIA operative. And his real name is Ismael Felix Rodriguez. Boom. Three years later. So then I ran is my head Felix Rodriguez through all of our databases, or databases, excuse me, and I find out this guy is a CIA operative. And I find out that this guy was the same guy that captured Che Guevara in South America. And I found out that the same guy was involved in Watergate. And I found out that this guy was very close to old man Bush. Then I found out that this guy was also involved in the Bay of Pigs. Older guy. And I said, I'll be darned. 
And I check with those guys and I says, are you sure this guy? He says, yeah, he, says, no, he was there. He was there. And then they say, he was also at pre-adoption meetings. I said, were they planned Kiki's murder? Yes, he was part of the American team that was coming down and meeting with the government officials here and the DFS when we dis they discussed uh, picking up Kiki Camarena. I says, whoa. I was shocked. I, I, I got to believe again. Now, here we go again. Uh, it, it, it's another CIA operative that <laughs> comes out of the woodworks. Do, do you trust the government you're working for at this moment? No, I don't. I, I I have to believe sitting in your seat and realizing that this guy, Max Gomez, who is is under an alias, um, what's his name? Ismael Felix Rodriguez is his real name. Felix Rodriguez is not only a CIA operative, but he's great friends with old man Bush. And he's carrying out all of these high-profile operations all over the world. What does someone like you do at that moment? Because I'm surprised you didn't get shut down earlier. I was shut down early. That, 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 and that's, where, that's when they shut the investigation down, when I got to that level in the investigation, John. That's when they shut it down. So when you got to, to Max Gomez, that was it? That was it. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, let's talk about <laughs> the heads of the Guadalajara cartel. All three go down. Um, Felix Gallero, he did, how, how much time does he eventually get? He did like 20-some uh, uh, some years. He just got out on... Humanitarian uh, reasons, he's uh, not in good health. So the Mexican government being compassionate, you know, let him go. He's on a house arrest right now. So he's literally walking the streets yes, after 20-something years. Yes, sir. How much time was he originally sentenced to? 40 years. Okay, what about his partner, Rafa? Rafa was also released on, on false pretenses. He was out free for a while and uh, decided that he was going to be a cartel member again. Uh, and he was running around here last year, two years ago, uh, running a cartel out of Sonora, Mexico. And he was just uh, arrested again for I don't know what reason, but he, he's in jail right now. But he had he, he's not being charged with a Camarena case anymore. He was just being charged with uh, trafficking in drugs. And uh, Fonseca also did about, out of a 40-year sentence, I think he did like 20-some years, Excuse me. And he's also free now in living living at home, walking the streets. So these guys are all out of jail. Um, excuse me, with the exception of Rafa, who decides he wants to get back in the business. Did he get back in the business? Did they even need the money anymore? Did, did you guys seize all of their assets? Did they have anything left? Of course, the, the Mexican government, government never seized any other assets. We seized some of uh, Quintero's assets, like, like I said, out, out of um, Luxembourg and uh, the Cayman Islands, but mo most of them were allowed to keep their money. So they're millionaires still. They're not, they're so, not poor. Uh, 